Let your hallelujah resound. I welcome you to Sunday worship. Sunny day, wonderful day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What a glorious day. And I pray that the glory of the day and the sunshine of the day will be in every life in Jesus' name. Especially today, we're in Revelation. Somebody help me shout Revelation. And the Lord will reveal His mind, His truth, His power in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today because you've invited us and we have come and we know you are here. We're asking, Lord, that your power will work and manifest in every life in Jesus' name. Let's be truly a Sunday for every one of us. No weakness, no shadow, no drooping, no depression, no sadness, sunshine from heaven in Jesus' name. I will pray that you'll be glorified in every life. The joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Another amen. The Lord bless your life and bless our worship. We're coming to Revelation chapter 1. I'm reading four verses of scripture to you. I'm reading from verse 5, verse 6, verse 7, verse 8. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold the cometh of the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Those are the verses we're looking at in our worship service today. And I've titled this, The Redeeming Blood That Prepares Us For His Coming. You will see in verses 5 and 6, it talks about the blood, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Son of God, that blood that redeems us from all iniquity. And then it says, immediately after that, he has made us, by that atonement, by that sacrifice, by the death on the cross of Calvary, he has made us kings and priests unto God the Father. After declaring that to us, intimating that because we are now kings and priests unto the Lord, we shall reign with him. You will reign with him. And then he says, it may not be long, because the coming one will soon appear. And he says, he comes, behold him, as he comes in the clouds. And he says, every eye shall see him, and he shall wail because of him. He says, I am Alpha, and I am Omega, the beginning, and the ending says the Lord, he was, and he is, and he is to come. He is the Almighty. And the church of the living God said, Amen. Amen. The redeeming blood that prepares us for his coming. 
coming. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 9 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Anybody getting, to, getting ready to reign over there? Where we we'll reign in Jesus' name. The redeeming blood that prepares us for his coming. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purifying power in the Messiah's spotless blood. Spotless blood. Blameless blood. Pure blood. Perfect blood. Heavenly blood. The purifying power in the Messiah's spotless blood. Point number two. The present priesthood of all meek spiritual believers. We come to the Lord. We turn away from our sins and we turn holy, wholeheartedly unto the Lord. And because we believe he was our sacrifice, our substitute, our sin bearer, we surrender our lives to him and it makes us believers or a carnal, it makes us spiritual or a sinful, it makes us saintly. And now these meek spiritual believers have a present priesthood. He, Christ, has made us kings and priests unto God his Father. Point number three. The prophetic proclamation of his majesty's shining brightness is coming in the clouds. Is the sun S U N shining with brightness? And when he comes, he will come in his splendor, in his glory. He'll come shining from heaven. And this is the prophetic proclamation of his majesty's shining brightness. We're coming to point number one. In point number one, we have the purifying power in the Messiah's spotless blood. Look at what the blood does. It tells us in Revelation chapter one, reading from verse five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him, unto Christ, unto Jesus, unto Jesus Christ, unto the Son of God, unto the Messiah, unto the Redeemer, unto him that loved us and washed us and cleansed us and purified us from our sins in his own blood. He has purchased us. He has redeemed us. He has brought us to himself. And between now and the time we appear in glory, we'll be giving praise and honor to him because it is his blood that has redeemed us it is the blood that is shed that has cleansed us, washed us, purged us, purified us, making us ready for his coming. Look at Revelation chapter 7. And you will see that anyone that gets saved, anyone that gets to heaven, it is through that blood from any part of the world and from any generation of humanity, Anyone that gets to heaven 
is getting to heaven because of the cleansing, the washing in the blood of the Lamb. In Revelation chapter 7 verse 9, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, you are part of that multitude, which no man could number of all nations, of all kindreds, of all people, of all tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four living creatures, the beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and they worshiped God, saying, What did they say? Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are rich in fine linen? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Not the great tribulation, great tribulation, great trouble, great trial, great temptation. And then it says, A mage, and they have washed their robes and made them white somebody there tell me in the blood of the lamb multitudes from all nations from all kindred from all people from all tongues the only reason they can appear before the lord is that they were made clean made pure made holy by the blood of the lamb therefore verse 15 because of the effect, the efficacy of the blood of Jesus on their soul, on their character, on their life, because of the effectiveness of that blood of the Lamb, therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple, you will serve the Lord forever. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. We shall hunger no more. You will hunger no more. Neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Isn't that wonderful? I said, isn't that wonderful? nor any heat for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living waters and God shall wipe away God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes from your eyes from our eyes in Jesus name you will cry no more. Because of the effect of the blood of the Lamb. Hey, look at what Jesus Christ himself said. As for the power, purifying power. As for the power, redeeming power in his precious blood. And thank God it was shed for you. I said it was shed for you. After he has done that for you, he cannot reject you. You come to him and you plead the blood. You don't plead and say, I'm good. No one is good. You don't plead and say, I've been living an angelic life since I was born. Nobody like that. All I've seen and come short of the glory of God. But on the basis of the blood of the Lamb, he will receive you. He will redeem you. He will not cast you away. And you will be in the kingdom in Jesus' name. 
Look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, of the New Covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of their sins, for the removal of their sin, for the cleansing of their sin. And see what that blood has done. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 28. The blood of the Lamb. What he's done for us. And what he has done for everyone that comes to him. Everyone that believes in him. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers to feed the church not to browbeat the church not to oppress the church not to exercise undue authority over the church and not to fleece the church not to take from the church, from members of the church, what rightfully belongs to them. He has made you overseers, pastors, preachers, teachers, to feed the church of God. Look at this, which he has purchased with his own blood. He has purchased everyone in the church. I mean the living church. I mean the militant church. I mean the triumphant church. Not just the church goers, the people who have turned away from their sins and they have believed of the Lord Jesus Christ and they are part of the ecclesia. The people who are called out of the world and called out of sin and they have relied upon the blood that is shed for us on the cross of Calvary. He has purchased everyone like that with his own blood. Forgiveness has come. Redemption has come. Assurance of salvation has come. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you have turned away from sin and you have turned to the Lord and you believe the Lord died for you, salvation is just already in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus came. He knew nobody could qualify for heaven. Nobody could qualify for glory. Nobody could reach and touch the glory of God in our strength, in our power, in our self-righteousness. Because all have sinned, all have come short of the glory of God. Be justified freely. Thank God salvation is free. Tell the person by your side, salvation is free. It's for everyone. And you cannot say, I didn't get it because I have no money to pay. I didn't get it because I didn't cry enough. I didn't get it because I didn't go to, you know, the Christian school. Salvation is available here and now. It will be yours in Jesus' name. Be justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith tell me what follows there tell me tell me now let your neighbors hear in his blood that's why it's giving glory to god that your salvation you know your salvation does not depend on how you feel some people say i don't feel saved i don't think i'm saved I don't have the right feeling. I feel this way. I feel that way. Salvation is not based on feeling. It is based on faith in his blood. That blood was shed for you. That blood will never fail on your behalf. And if you have not been saved today, as you say, Lord, I take you as my savior. I turned away from my sin. I believe the blood of Jesus was shed for me. You will be saved in Jesus' name. 
if you have done that before but you need to have assurance is because you're looking in the wrong direction look at the right direction now and look unto jesus your salvation is confirmed in jesus name to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth. That believeth, he has believed. He keeps on believing in Jesus. That salvation will not miss you and you will not miss the salvation it is yours Satan cannot take it away from you the world cannot take it away from you I am saved look at Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse uh, reading from verse 8 Romans chapter 5 verse 8 but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, tell me, Christ died for us. You know, you and some people, they've been coming to our church for some time now. Are you saved now? What do you say? I'm still trying to be saved. What do you mean? I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. I'm trying to make myself better. I'm trying to do this and do this and do that. You see, I don't want to deceive myself. I am a sinner. And I'm trying to take the sins out one by one. After that, when I've done everything and I've personally taken all the sins away from my life, then I will receive Jesus as my Savior. You don't need him then. If you have already saved yourself, if you have already cleansed yourself, if you're already free from sin, if you have the power, natural power, natural ability to save yourself, why are you going to come into Christ? Look at that again. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, just as you are, come as you are, Christ died for us. He died for me. I said he died for me. It is not the work of your hand that saves you. It is not turning over a new leaf that saves you. It is not trying by yourself to be righteous that saves you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified. Being now justified. Being now justified. Somebody tell me what follows. By his blood, praise the Lord. Justified, justified by his blood. It's the blood that Jesus shed. That's what gives us salvation. That's what gives us salvation. We shall be saved from wrath through him. No wrath upon the lives of those who are saved. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God. We rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received not in the future, we have received it now. We have now received the atonement. The blood of Jesus Christ makes us to have, even now at this present hour, the atonement. Look at Colossians chapter 1. There's something here for you. Colossians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 28 to, uh, from verse uh, 12 giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance in the saints in light, who has delivered us 
who has delivered us from what? I can't hear my people. Are you delivered? I said, are you delivered? Why? Is it that somebody who says, I am saved, I am sanctified, I am filled with the Holy Ghost, is running about, running here, running there, and we say, we didn't see you the last time when we had worship. He said, you know, Pastor, I went for deliverance somewhere. Deliverance? Deliverance from what? Ah, this one is troubling them. This one is troubling them. All your troubles are over. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Who is delivered? I said, who has been delivered? When Christ has done it, you don't need any other minister trying to deliver you, trying to deliver you. This is the greatest deliverance you can have. If you accept it, it is by the blood of the Lamb. You are delivered in Jesus' name. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whose kingdom are you today? I said, in whose kingdom are you today? He has translated you. He has transported you into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood wonderful through his blood then it says even forgiveness of sins even forgiveness of sins when you come to the lord through the blood of jesus your sins are forgiven and the devil is a liar and he's always whispering behind you you remember your sin 19 such and such 19, uh, 20 something, even the sin of your father, the sin of your grandfather, the sin of generation, that's why you are suffering. Satan is a liar. Tell him Satan is a liar. He has forgiven your sin. You will not suffer for those sins anymore in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is so powerful and the blood of Jesus is so mighty. Thank God he has forgiven you. You claim it, you have it. You say it is for me, it is yours in Jesus' name. Look at now, I'm reading to you from Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. There are people that, you know, every time we preach about sanctification, they say, well, that's my problem. And that's my desire. I want to be sanctified. I prayed the other time. I thought I was sanctified. As I hear now, I want to pray again and to be sanctified. And I'm saying, how are you sanctified? What makes you sanctified? Well, my feeling, when I feel good, when I feel happy, when I feel joyful, when I feel I'm on the top of the world, I am sanctified. Ah. So it's your feeling that sanctifies you. It's your thinking that sanctifies you. Look at that verse again. It says, wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, tell me, with his own blood. It is the blood of Jesus that sanctifies us. I am sad. Am I still sanctified? It's your emotion that is sad. Your soul is sanctified. Your spirit is sanctified. 
the blood does not change with circumstances the blood does not change with situations that may happen to you is suffered without the gauge is suffered for you and thank god your sanctification is guaranteed look at verse 20 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood think about that through the blood of the everlasting covenant the same efficacy of the blood of jesus in the time of peter the time of Paul and the time of Mary and the time of saints and, and the prophets gone by, that same efficacy of the blood is still there today. It's the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect in every good work. Can you be perfect? I said, can you be perfect? Can your pastor be perfect? Can your wife be perfect? Ah, I can't hear the answer now. Can your husband be perfect? How are they going to be perfect? By criticizing them every time? Are they going to be perfect? By saying, look at this now. Go and pray. Go and pray. You must seek the Lord. Don't talk to me until you, you change everything. And when you change and you are perfect like me, then you can come and talk to me. What makes us perfect? It is the blood of the everlasting covenant. And that blood will perfect your heart, perfect your soul, perfect your life in Jesus' name. Make you perfect in every good work to do His will. You will do the will of God. Walking in you that which is well pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever looks like there's so many amen if the passages were reading to you something is happening to you today you turn to the right there'll be an amen you turn to the left there'll be an amen you go to your place of work there'll be an amen the joy of the Lord will never cease in your life in Jesus name we're coming back to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation, I'm reading from chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 1, we're looking at verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, we're reading from verse 5. It tells us in verse 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood let me summarize this point one for you what do we have in the blood through the blood by the blood of jesus christ number one pardon forgiveness he pardons all our sins the ones we did even deliberately and the ones we did unintentionally the ones we did because we were weak we didn't know to do better number one through the blood there is pardon number two there is peace there's peace in your soul peace in your heart and there's no turbulence at all because now by the blood he gives us peace number three propitiation propitiation we have propitiation through his blood that's romans chapter 3 uh, from verse 24 to verse 25 we have propitiation all your sins are cleansed all your sins are washed away all your sins taken uh, given away number four is pass over pass over when i see the blood somebody there tell me i will pass over you judgment will pass over you wrath will pass over you because of the blood number five protection 
when the blood is upon the lintel of your house, the lintel of your heart, that evil angel passing by and killing the firstborn of Egypt will not touch you. You will not die before your time. I see many years ahead of you. And I see bright, shining future in your life in Jesus' name. How? By the blood of the Lamb. Number, number six is purging. He purges us. He purges us. And then number seven is purity. He purifies us through the blood of the Lamb. Number seven, number eight is power. There is power in the blood. Wonder walking power in the blood. And anything that comes to trouble your life, the wonder walking power in the blood of the Lamb, even today, somebody help me shout today. Amen. It will cleanse everything and drive everything away in Jesus' name. Amen. The powers that pursue you is the blood that will chase them away from your life. Number nine is priesthood. Priesthood. That's in Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 6. He has made us kings and priests, and it is through the blood. Number 10 is preservation. It will preserve your life. The next time we have a meeting for you here, I will see you here. Stronger, higher, happier. Only in Jesus' name. The revelation of the blood of Jesus that comes to you is supposed to make you stronger. You'll be stronger. Preservation. Number 11. We read in Hebrews chapter 13. is perfection. Somebody help me shout perfection. And then you know, we read in Revelation chapter 7. Paradise. You will be there. Today, Jesus told that thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. When your time comes to go home, you will not be struggling. When your time comes, not today, not today, not even nearby now, after you finish your work, after you have lived a happy life, a successful life, a life that glorifies the Lord. When your time comes, you will go marching in. The Lord will receive you in paradise in Jesus' name. Amen. On what grounds? How? Why? Because I feel good. Uh -uh, not your feeling. Through the blood of the Lamb. The Lord loves you. And because of that, He has washed you in His own blood. Is preparing you for glory you'll be there in the blood there is remission remission of sin in the blood there's regeneration he renews us he regenerates us he turns our lives around regeneration in the blood there is redemption redemption he redeems us from the hand of the enemy in the blood there is righteousness in the blood there is reconciliation in the blood there is restoration in the blood there's the final resurrection everything is yours before you go today get the benefit of the blood of the lamb you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the present priesthood of all meek spiritual believers. The present priesthood of all meek spiritual believers. Let's come to Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen some people are tired of amen 
He doesn't say he's going to make us in the future. He has made us, he has made you already a king and a priest. Look at Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 9. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast uh, redeemed us to God by thy blood. Always notice that. Redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10. And has made who? Ah, us. And has made personalize it he has made you unto a god king and priest and you will reign on the earth a good good amen first peter chapter one first peter chapter two first peter chapter two we're reading from verse nine but ye are a chosen generation the lord chose you the lord chose me the lord has chosen us think about that you know some people every time a little thing happens and they feel not quite happy they say god has rejected me ah it's your mind it's your soul it's your feeling it's like you want to get married and you prayed and you chose a sister or you chose a brother and every time a little thing happens i was to be there we have appointment and in five minutes i wasn't there i was a little bit late my husband has rejected me my wife has rejected me it's your feeling huh? We don't reject people like that on that little thing, that little thing. And God does not reject on that little thing, that little thing. The Lord has chosen you. Somebody there said the Lord has chosen you. And you ought to walk straight with your shoulders covered and looking up. Walking like a king's kid that you know that God has chosen you. And Satan cannot come between you and God in Jesus' name. But she a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The power of darkness will never overcome you anymore in Jesus' name. Priests unto the Lord. Priests unto the Lord. We're looking at Psalm 132. Psalm 132. What does he do to the priest that he has chosen? The priest that he has appointed in Psalm 132. We're reading from verse 9. Psalm 132, reading from verse 9. Let Thy priest be clothed with righteousness. That's his duty. He chose you to be a priest. He chose you to be a king, a royal priesthood. He will close you with righteousness. And let a saint shout for joy. Let a saint shout for joy. You know, priests in the Old Testament were mighty and powerful. And the same thing today, the priests of God. Are the priests of God around today? Where are they? The priests of God, you're powerful. Look at Joshua. Joshua, the power, the privilege of those priests. He makes you a priest. And what does he do? Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13. And that she was... Uh, Chapter, chapter 3, reading from verse 13. In verse 13, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, 
the Lord of, the, of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a knee. The Lord wanted to dry River Jordan before them. Moses had gone away, has already gone to his reward. And the rod, nobody is using that same rod of Moses anymore. When God wanted to divide the Red Sea for them, he said, Moses, stretch out your rod. But Moses is not here, his rod is not here. But the priests were there. And he carried the ark, the presence of the Lord. And God said, as soon as their feet touched the waters of Jordan, Jordan will be divided. Any demarcation in your life, any water of hindrance in your life, any river that is so deep and so wide, there is no bridge to cross over, and your possession is on the other side, let the priest keep walking. I said, let the priest keep walking. As your feet will touch the waters of Jordan, Jordan will divide before you. And so from today, don't say, is the river that hinders me? Is that situation that hinders me? That situation will dry up before you in Jesus' name. In verse 14, and it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priest bearing the ark. Remember the ark symbolized the presence of God. The ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priest that then the ark were ditch in the brim of the waters, for Jordan overflowed all its banks all the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up unto, unto an, an hill and heap very far from the city of Adam that is beside Zeratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. Your Jordan is cut off. And the people passed over, and the people passed over, and our people passed over against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. That middle of River Jordan will become dry when you put your feet there in Jesus' name. And it says, if they stood fast in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites pass over on dry ground until how many people? Until how many people? I'm talking about the people there. How many people here? All the people pass over clean over Jordan. Praise the Lord, you are passing over. He has made us kings, number one. He has made us priests, number two. For kings, what does that mean? Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. This is yours. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. He has made you a king, speak out the word of power, that mountain will vanish away. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? You know the revelation the Lord has given us? The Lord has made us kings and priests unto God. We are accepted. He cannot make us kings and priests if we're not accepted. 
we are anointed. When kings and priests were appointed those days, they were anointed. You're anointed with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. We are appointed to do something. We are appointed to carry the presence of God everywhere we go in Jesus' name. As priests, we stand before God for men. We take the case of man before God. We stand before God for men. And when you pray and you make intercession for anybody in your family, anybody in your local church, anybody in the ministry, God will answer you. As priests, we stand before men for God. Look at those priests in the Old Testament. They stood before men and they spoke on behalf of God. When you go to evangelize, when you go to talk to people and you want them to be reconciled unto God, you are acting as the priest of God. You are standing before men on behalf of God. As priests, we pray to God with assurance. Anytime a plague broke out and Moses called Aaron, take the censer and go into the people. When the priest got there, the plague will come to a standstill, will stop immediately. As priests, when we pray, we pray with assurance that plague will leave your family. Untimely death will leave your family. Calamity will leave your family. Suicide spirit will leave your family. We pray to God as priests with assurance. We plead with men as ambassadors. As priests of God, we plead with men as, amb as ambassadors. As kings, we have dominion on earth. You have dominion on earth. Don't be looking for another king to use his authority for you. You have authority, bring out the word of power, and that mountain will move away from your life in Jesus' name. As kings, we subdue principalities and powers. Every principality in your life, what's a principality? The principle of evil powers, the principle. And once you conquer the principal, you conquer all his cohorts, they vanish before you in Jesus' name. As kings, we subdue principalities and powers and we bring all enemies under subjection. They will bow. I said they will bow. Somebody shout, bow. They will bow. They will not go home with you. No power of darkness, no power of evil will harass your life anymore in Jesus' name. As priests and kings, we have unlimited, unhindered access to God. We can go to God anytime. Here, at home, on the road, something is happening. You can call upon God anytime. You are priests of the Lord. You have unhindered access to God. Not only that, you have undeniable answers to prayer. You are going to find out that any prayer you pray this in this house of God today, God has answered already. As priests, we have undiminished anointing with power. You didn't say amen to that one? Power in your life power in your heart you know sometimes a little thing happens and your heart is palpitating and your life is doing like this as if your life wants to escape from your body and run away from the trouble heart peace be still let your heart stay there and look at that trouble eyeball to eyeball don't stand as i'm an ordinary believer and i'm ordinary person don't talk like that today now i am a king and with power and authority and assurance you speak it is done in jesus name point number three we're coming to we're coming to revelation chapter one revelation chapter one 
and I'm reading from verse 7 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. How mighty is our Jesus? I said, how mighty is your Savior? How mighty is your Redeemer? Almighty. No other person. Satan is not almighty. Demons are not almighty. Sickness is not almighty. Diseases are not almighty. Poverty is not almighty. Everything will be subdued under the Almighty in Jesus' name. Now, we're talking about the prophetic proclamation of His Majesty shining brightness. The Lord is coming again. There are two parts to the coming. One phase and then another phase. There is the rapture and then there is the second coming. For the believer, you will take part in the rapture. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this will say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. There's no doubt the Lord is coming. We remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You believe that? You believe resurrection? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's rapture. Somebody help me shout the word rapture. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I'll be there. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May you be comforted today in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15. In First Corinthians chapter 15, we're reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 51. It says in verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery which we shall not all sleep, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And tell me, if you are going to be there and say it aloud, if you are going to take part in the rapture, say it aloud, and we shall be changed. I pray you'll be there in Jesus' name. Now, there's also the second coming of the Lord. Second coming of the Lord. That's when all eyes will see him. And they will wail because of him. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 
it tells us in second thessalonians chapter one and we're reading from verse seven second Thessalonians chapter one verse seven and to you who are troubled rest with us you're persecuted rest with us you've been crying rest with us you've been under some pressure rest with us you will rest you know we have to obey the scriptures if the lord is telling us be peaceful rest everything is over already we must say praise the lord every bad thing is over now i take my rest your rest in jesus name and to you who are troubled rest